Adding weathering or chipping to your models can be a great way to take them up a notch. Whether it's an extra finishing touch or a stylistic choice that appears across your entire army, it's a super fun thing to paint and can be surprisingly easy too. Hello there! In this video, we'll be showing you just a few ways you can start weathering models from your own collection. From simple armor chipping to rust and verdigris, these techniques work on just about everything, so stick around and check them out. Now, weathering is often one of the last things we do in the painting process. Not only is it easier to weather a finished model, but we also want all the transfers to be applied so we can weather those too. For these reasons, it's always a good idea to get your model near finished before adding any weathering. So for our first example, I'll be adding some chipping to this Imperial Fist Spartan door I painted earlier. You'll notice it's been base coated and washed, but it's not actually got any highlights on it. Now I've not added any traditional highlights to this because strangely enough, we can add highlights through chipping instead. So I'm gonna get some foam. This is just some spare foam from a carry case, but any foam or sponge will do. Tear off a small piece, find a comfortable way to use it. You can hold it, grip it with tweezers, or if you want to be really precise, a neat trick is to actually place it into a brush cap instead. Once we're ready, we need our highlight color. So for me, this is Dawn Yellow, but for you, it could be Calgar Blue or Fengrisian Gray. Just swap it out for whatever you need. Get some paint on the sponge and then start dabbing it into some kitchen towel until there's a tiny bit left. And then it's time to add it to the model. Start lightly dabbing it over the area you want to chip. Just like with traditional highlights, try to focus this on the edges and raised areas. In combat, these are the most likely areas to get damaged, so focusing on them will look awesome and realistic. Keep it light and remember that less is more. We can always go back later to add extra if we really want to. And there we go. I finished adding all my Dawn Yellow and it's created this really cool worn effect whilst also adding some highlights. Now let's take that chipping further. Up next is Rhinox Hide. We're gonna be using this in the exact same way as before. Just remember to replace your foam or sponge with a new clean piece first. Now we're using Rhinox Hide because brown works well for chipping most things, with the obvious exception of things like brown armor. In which case you could use Mechanica Standard Grey instead, which also works really well on most things. It's up to you to decide which one you use, but the application process is exactly the same. And there we go. With those two easy steps done, we've already got some awesome looking chipping. There's just one extra step we can do to take it up a notch. If you want to, you can add an edge highlight of Stormhost Silver. I find this paint works really well for most things, but any bright silver will do. Iron Breaker is another great one. You can highlight all the edges or just the very sharpest, it's completely up to you. Maybe start with all the sharpest edges first, see how it looks, and then add more if you're unhappy. You can also add a small amount of this into the larger Rhinox Hide chips. This is where the chipping has been so deep that it's got through to the bare metal underneath. With that added, our chipping is done. And you can see just how fun and easy it can be. But it's not just vehicles that look great with some chipping on them. Your regular infantry have been storming through the battlefield as well, so it'll suit them perfectly too. Here I've got a Death Leaper base with a Space Marine who's unfortunately perished in battle, but his armor is looking a bit too polished for my liking. Just like our last example, I've fully base coated and shaded this Marine, but I've added no highlights yet. I've just started adding some battle damage on one of the legs here, and all I need to do is the same thing on the rest of the model. So I'll begin by sponging on the highlight color. In this case, I'll be using Evil Sun Scarlet. This time I will have to be a bit more careful as there are other colors on my marine that I don't want to get red onto, like the silver or the black, for example. And then onto Rhinox Hide with a clean piece of sponge. Remember, you could use something like Mechanica Standard Gray instead if you want to. To finish up, I'll use Stormhost Silver once again to place some edge highlights. I'll stipple this onto the sharpest edges and place some into the larger bits of chipping just like last time. And there we go, the dead Space Marine Intercessor is looking suitably battle-worn thanks to that chipping and damage. Hopefully those two examples have shown you just how easy chipping really is. But what about weathering, like rust or oxidation? How do we do those? There are loads of ways to add rust to your models, but a really fun, subtle way is to mix scrag brown with water and apply it in thin layers. So to start, I'm gonna mix one part scrag brown with five parts of clean water. Now we're using water here rather than Lamia Medium because it will dry with a slightly rougher effect, which is exactly what we want for this sort of thing. Once the mix is ready, we can start looking for areas on the model to place it. It can obviously go wherever you want it to, but if you want it to be realistic, try to think about where water might collect over time. So I'm gonna be looking to place my rust in these holes here and down this concrete beam too. I like to imagine that loads of rain has caused the rust to trickle down from these support poles at the top, making the whole thing look really grimy. Applying it is as simple as just painting it on. It might look quite strong now, but when it dries, it will appear more subtle. 
But if you're unsure about how it will look and don't want to be unhappy with the result, just apply slightly less than you want to, let it dry, and then add more afterwards. Applying it in several thin layers lets you slowly build up to a colour that you're happy with. If you do want a stronger effect, go in with a brighter orange on top, something like Fire Dragon Bright, and apply it in the exact same way as we did our Scrag Brown. But this time focus more on the centre of the rust areas. Finally, let's run through how to add a cool verdigris effect to your models. Oxidation of bronze over time produces a bluish rust called verdigris, and the aptly named Nylac Oxide is designed to replicate that effect. It's an awesome way to make dark gold and copper colours look weathered and worn. And to do it, it's as simple as painting it on. There's no need to thin it, just put some onto your palette first so you don't overload your brush, and then once again start looking for areas where water might collect on your bronze areas. So I'm going to paint it into this recess here, as well as around all these rivets too. It's that simple, and the effect is really strong too. You should only need one layer of this, but for whatever reason you do want to add another one, just make sure the first one is dry before you do so. And that's our final weathering effect complete. This is by far the easiest one out of the bunch, and it looks great too. If you collect Death Guard or Flesh Eater Quartz, you'll have a field day. I'm just going to add some Valhalla Blizzard to my base to tie all those effects together. And blammo. The chipping, rust, and verdigris all look awesome underneath this Death Leaper. And they were super fun to do as well. Weathering is such a great way to take your models up a notch and truly plant them into the battlefield. It works on a huge array of factions across the Grimdark Future and even the Mortal Realms. Although some armies definitely like it more than others. <laughs> Hopefully this video has helped to show you just a few ways to go about weathering some of your models from your own collection, and if you haven't already, definitely give it a go. It's personally one of my favourite parts about painting, and I didn't even discover it until fairly recently. I really wish I discovered it sooner. For more tutorials, tips and tricks, check out some of the other videos on the Warhammer YouTube channel, or you can head to your local Warhammer store, where our amazing staff are always happy to help. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye!